the appetite may sicken and so die. That strain again, it had a dying fall. Oh. It came o'er my ear like the sweet south that breathes upon a bank of violence, stealing and giving odor. Enough! No more, tis not so sweet now as it was before. <laughs> oh, spirit of love, how quick and fresh art thou, that notwithstanding thy capacity receiveth as the sea, not enters there but validity and pitch so air, but falls into abatement and low price even in a minute. <laughs> so full of shapes is fancy that it alone is high fantastical. Will you go hunt, my lord? What, Curio? The heart. I so I do, <laughs> the noblest that I have. When mine eyes did see Olivia first, methought she purged the air of pestilence. That instant was I turned into a heart, and my desires, like fell and cruel hounds, ere since pursue me. How now? What news from her? So please, my lord, I might not be admitted, but from her handmaid, do return this answer. <clears throat> The element itself, till seven years he, shall not behold herself at ample view, but like a cloister she will veil and walk, and water once a day her chamber round with eye-offending brine. All this to season a brother's dead love, which she would keep fresh and lasting in her sad remembrance. Oh, she that hath a heart of that fine frame, to pay this debt of love but to a brother! Oh, how will she love when the rich golden shaft hath killed the flock of all affections else that live in her? When liver, brain, and heart, these sovereign thrones, are all supplied and filled her sweet perfections with one self-king. Away before me to sweet beds of flowers, love thoughts lie rich when canopied with bowers. <laughs> yourself were saved. Oh, my poor brother. And so, perchance may he be. True, madam. And to comfort you with chance, assure yourself, after our ship did split, when you and those poor numbers saved with you hung to our dragon boats, I saw your brother, most provident in peril, bind himself, courage and hope both teaching him the practice, to a strong mass that lived on the sea, where, like Arian on the dolphin's back, I saw him hold acquaintance with the waves, so long as I could see. For saying so, there's gold. Mine own escape unfolded to my hope, which thy speech serves for authority the like of him. Knowest thou this country? I, madam. Well, for I was bred and born not three hours' travel from this very place. Who governs here? A noble duke in nature as in name. What is his name? Orsino. Orsino? I've heard my father name him. He was a bachelor then. And so is now. Or was, so very late. For but a month ago I went from hence. And then twas fresh in murmur, as you know, what great ones do the less who have prattle of, that he did seek the love of fair Olivia. What she? A virtuous maid, the daughter of a count who died some twelve months since, then leaving her in the protection of his son, 
her brother, who shortly also died, for whose dear love, they say, he hath abjured the sight and company of men. Oh, that I served that lady, and might not be delivered to the world, till I have made mine own occasion mellow when my estate is. That were hard to compass, because she will admit no kind of suit, no, not the Duke's. There is a fair behavior in thee, Captain, and though that nature with a beauteous wall doth oft close in pollution, yet of thee I will believe thou hast the mind that suits with this thy fair and outward character. I pray thee, and I'll pay thee bounteously. Conceal me what I am, and be my aid, for such disguise as haply shall become the form of my intent. I'll serve this duke. Thou shalt present me as an eunuch to him. <laughs> it may be worth thy pains, for I can sing and speak to him in many sorts of music that will allow me very worth his service. What else may have to time I will commit. Only shape thou thy silence to my wit. Be you his eunuch, and your mute I'll be, and my tongue blabs and let mine eyes not see. I thank thee. Lead me on.
Why, I think so. I'm not such an ass, but I can keep my hand dry. <laughs> but what's your jest? A dry jest, sir. Are you full of them? I, sir, I have them at my fingers' ends. Mary, now I let go your hand. I'm barren. <laughs> 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 oh, mate, thou last a cup of canary. Oh, when did I see thee so put down? Never in your life, I think, unless you see canary put me down. Mm. Mm. Methinks sometimes I have no more wit than a Christian or an ordinary man has. <laughs> but I am a great eater of beef, and I believe that does harm to my wit. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that I'd forswear it. I'll write home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Well, pourquoi, my dear knight? What is pourquoi? Is it do or, or not do? Oh, had I bestowed the time and the tongues that I had in uh, fencing and dancing and bear baiting? Oh, had I but followed the arts. Oh, then hadst thou had an excellent head of hair. Why, would that have mended my hair? Past question, for thou seest it will not curl by nature. But it becomes me well enough, does not? Oh, excellent. <laughs> Things like flats on a distaff. And I'd hope to see a hussif take thee between her legs and spin it off. <laughs> Faith, I'll home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Your niece will not be seen. Or if she be, it's four to one, she'll none of me. The Count himself here hard by woos her. She'll none of the Count. She'll not match above her degree, neither in estate, years, nor wit. I've heard her swear it. Tut this life, int man! I'll stay a month longer. <laughs> I am a fellow with the strangest mind in the world. I delight in masks and revels sometimes all together. Mm. Tell me, I'm no good at these kick shawls this night. As any man in Illyria, whatsoever he be, under the degree of my betters, yet I will not compare with an old man. What is thy excellence in a galliard knight? Faith, I can cut a caper, and I can cut a button to it. And I think I have the back trick simply as strong as any man in Illyria. Well, wherefore are these things hid? Oh, wherefore have these gifts a curtain before them? Are they like to dust like Mistress Mall's picture? Oh, why dost thou not go to church in a galliard and come home in a caranto? But my very walk should be a jig. I would not so much as make water. Put in a sink of pace. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, what dost thou mean? Is it a world to hide virtues in? For I did think by the excellent constitution of thy leg that it were formed under the star of a galleon. Aye, tis strong. And does he differ well in a dun-colored stock? <laughs> shall we set about some rebels? Oh, what shall we do else? Were we not born under Taurus? Taurus, that's sides and heart. Oh, no, sir, it's legs and thighs. Come, let me see thee caper. <laughs> oh, higher! <laughs> Excellent! Just great. If the Duke continue these favors towards you, Cesario, you are like to be much advanced. He has known you but three days, and already you are no stranger. You either fear his humor or my negligence be called to question the continuance of his love. Is he inconstant, sir, in his favors? No, <laughs> believe me. <laughs> I thank you. Who saw Cesario, um, home? On your attendance, my lord, here. Stand you a while, Lulu. Cesario, thou knowest no less of it all. I have unclasped to thee the book even of my secret soul. Therefore, good youth, address thy date unto her. Be not denied access. Stand in her doors and tell them there thy fixed foot shall grow till thou have audience. Sure, my noble lord, if she be so abandoned to her sorrow as it is spoke, she never will admit me. Be clamorous and leap all civil bounds rather than make unprofited return. Oh, see, I do speak with her, my lord. What then? Oh, then unfold the passion of my love. Surprise her with discourse of my dear faith. It shall become thee well to act my woes. She will attend it better in thy youth than in a nuncio's of more grave aspect. Uh, I think not so, my lord. Dear lad, believe it. For well, they shall yet belie thy happy years that say thou art a man. <laughs> Diana's lip is not more smooth and rubious, and thy small pipe is as the maiden's organ, shrill and sound, and all the semblance of a woman's part. <laughs> I know thy constellation is right apt for this affair. Some four or five attend him, all if you will, for I myself am best when least in company. Prosper well in this, 
and thou shalt live as freely as thy lord to call his fortunes thine. I'll do my best to woo your lady. Yet a barful strife, whoe'er I woo, myself would be his wife. Let her hang me. He that is well hanged in this world needs to fear no color. Make that good. He shall see none to fear. A good Lenten answer. Mm. I can tell thee where that saying was born of I fear no colors. Where, good Mistress Mary? In the wars. And that may you be bold to say in your foolery. Well, God give them wisdom that have it, and those that are fools let them use their talents. Yet you will be hanged for being so long absent, or to be turned away. Is not that as good as a hanging to you? Many a good hanging prevents a bad marriage. <laughs> and for turning away, let summer bear it out. You are resolute, then? Not so, neither. But I am resolved on two points. That if that one break, the other will hold. Four. Or if both break, your gaskins fall. Apt, in good faith, very apt. Well, go thy way. If Sir Toby would leave drinking, thou wert as witty a piece of you splash as any in Illyria. Peace, you rogue, no more of that. <laughs> Here comes my lady. Make your excuse wisely, you were best. Wit, and be thy will, put me into good fooling. Those wits I think they have thee do very oft prove fools, and I that am sure I lack thee may pass for a wise man. But what says Quinopolis? Better a witty fool than a foolish wit. God bless thee, lady. Take the fool away. Do you not hear, fellows? Take away the lady. Go, oh, <laughs> too. You are a dry fool. I'll know more of you. Besides, you grow dishonest. Two faults, Madonna, that drink and good counsel will amend. Forgive the dry fool drink, then is the fool not dry. Bid the dishonest man mend himself. If he mend, he is no longer dishonest. If he cannot, let the botcher mend him. Anything that's mended is but patched. Virtue that transgresses is but patched with sin. And sin that amends is but patched with virtue. If that this simple syllogism will serve, so if it will not, what remedy? As there is no true cuckold but calamity, so beauty is a flower. The lady, they take away the fool, therefore I say again, take her away. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I bet them take away you. Miss Prison in the highest degree. Lady, calculus non facit monarchum. That's as much to say as I wear not motley in my brain. Good Madonna, give me leave to prove you a fool. Can you do it? Dexteriously, good Madonna. Make your proof? I must catechize you for it, Madonna. Good my mouse of virtue, answer me. Sir, for want of other idleness, I'll bide your proof. Good Madonna, why mournst thou? Good fool, for my brother's death. I think his soul is in hell, Madonna. I know his soul in heaven, fool. The more fool, Madonna, to mourn for your brother's soul being in heaven. Mm. Take away the fool, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> but think you of this fool, Malvolio, doth not mend. Yes, and shall do to the pangs of death shake him. Infirmity that decays the wise, doth ever make the better fool. God send you, sir, a speedy infirmity for the better increasing your folly. Sir Toby will be sworn that I am no fox, but he will not pass his word for two pence that you are no fool. How say you to that, Malvolia? I marvel your ladyship takes delight in such a barren rascal. I saw him put down the other day with an ordinary fool that has no more brain than a stone. Look you now, he's out of his guard already. Unless you laugh and minister occasion to him, he is gagged. I protest, I take these wise men that crow so at these set kind of fools, no better than the fool's zanies. Oh, you are sick of self-love, Malvolio, and taste with distempered appetite. To be generous and guiltless in a free disposition is to take those things for bird bolts that you deem cannon bullets. There is no slander in an allowed fool, though he do nothing but rail, nor no railing in a known discreet man, though he do nothing but reprove. 
Now Mercury and do thee with leasing, for thou speakst well of fools. Madam, there is at the gate a young gentleman much desires to speak with you. From the Count Orsino, is it? I know not, madam. Tis a fair young man, and well attended. Who of my people hold him in delay? Sir Toby, madam, your kinsman. Fetch him off, I pray you. He speaks nothing but man, man. Fie on him. Go you, Malvolio. It be a suit from the Count. I am sick or not at home. What you will to dismiss it. Now you see, sir, how your fooling grows old, and people dislike it. Thou hast spoke for us, Madonna, as if thy eldest son should be a fool, whose skull drove cram with brains, for here he comes, one of thy kin as a most weak, Piamon. By mine honor, how drunk. What is he at the gate, cousin? A gentleman. A gentleman? What gentleman? A gentleman who... Plague of these pickled herring. <laughs> <laughs> How now, son? It's her Toby. Cousin, cousin, how have you come so early by this lethargy? Lechery? I defy lechery. <laughs> well, there's one at the gate. Ay, Mary, what is he? Let him be the devil, and he will. I care not. Give me faith, say I. Well, it's all one. <laughs> <laughs> What's a drunken man like, fool? Like a drowned man, a fool, and a madman. One draught above heat makes him a fool, the second mads him, and the third drowns him. Go thou and seek the crowner, and let him sit or my cuz, for he is in the third degree of drink. He is drowned. He is but mad yet, Madonna, and the fool shall look to the madman. Madam, yon young fellow swears he will speak with you. I told him you were sick. He takes on him to understand so much, and therefore comes to speak with you. I told him you were asleep. He seems to have a foreknowledge of that too, and therefore comes to speak with you. <laughs> what is to be said to him, lady? He's fortified against any denial. He tell him he shall not speak with me. Oh, has been told so, and he says he'll stand at your door like a sheriff's post and be the supporter to a bench. But he'll speak with you. What kind of man is he? Why, of mankind. What manner of man? A very ill manner. He'll speak with you, will you or no? Of what personage in years is he? Not yet old enough for a man, nor young enough for a boy. As a squash is before tis a peas card, or a codling, when tis almost an apple. Tis with him in standing water between boy and man. <laughs> <laughs> he is very well favored, and he speaks very shrewishly. One would think his mother's milk were scarce out of him. <laughs> Let him approach, call in my gentlewoman. Gentlemen, my lady. <laughs> Give me my veil. Come, Lord, or my face. We'll once more hear Orsino's embassy. Is she? Speak to me, I shall answer for her your will. Most radiant, exquisite, and unmatchable beauty. I pray you, tell me if this be the lady of the house, for I never saw her. I would be loath to cast away my speech, for besides that it is excellently well penned, I have taken great pains to con it. Good beauties, let me sustain no scorn. I am very comfortable, even to the least. Sinister usage. Whence came you, sir? I can say little more than I have studied, and that question's out of my part. Good, gentle one, give me modest assurance if you be the lady of the house, that I may proceed in my speech. Uh, are you a comedian? <laughs> no, my profound heart. And yet by the very fangs of malice, I swear I'm not that I play. Are you the lady of the house? If I do not usurp myself, I am. Most certain if you are she, you do usurp yourself. <laughs> what is yours to bestow is not yours to reserve. But this is from my commission. I will along with my speech in your praise and show you the heart of my message. Come to what's important and I forgive you the praise. 
Alas, I took great pains to study it, and it is poetical. It is a more like to be feigned. I pray you, keep it in. I heard you were saucy at my gates, and allowed your approach rather to wonder at you than to hear you. If you be not mad, be gone. If you have reason, be brief. Tis not the time of moon with me to make in one so skipping a dialogue. Will you hoist sail, sir? Here lies your way. No, good swabber, I will halt here a little longer. Some mollification for your giant, sweet lady? Tell me your mind. I am a messenger. Sure you have some hideous matter to deliver, when the courtesy of it be so fearful. Speak your office. It alone concerns your ear. I bring no overture of war, no taxation of homage. I hold the olive in my hand. My words are as full of peace as matter. Yet you began rudely. What are you at? What would you? The rudeness that hath appeared in me have I learned for my entertainment. What I am and what I would are as secret as maidenhead. To your ears, divinity. To any others, profanation. Give us the place alone. We shall hear this divinity. <laughs> now, sir, what is your text? Most sweet lady. A comfortable doctrine, and much may be said of it. Where lies your text? In Orsino's bosom. In his bosom? In what chapter of his bosom? It's answered by the method in the first of his heart. Oh, I have read it. It is heresy. <laughs> have you no more to say? Good madam, let me see your face. Have you any commission from your lord to negotiate with my face? You are now out of your text. But... We will draw the curtain and show you the picture. Look you, sir. Such I want I was this present. Is not well done. Excellently done. If God did all, <laughs> tis in grain, sir. <laughs> Twill endure wind and weather. Tis beauty truly blent whose red and white nature's own sweet and cunning hand laid on. Lady, you are the cruelest she alive. You will lead these graces to the grave and leave the world no copy. Oh, sir, I will not be so hard-hearted. I will give out diverse schedules of my beauty. It shall be inventory and every particle and utensil labeled to my will. As item, two lips and different red, Item two gray eyes with lids to them. Item one neck, one chin, and so forth. Were well, you sent hither to praise me? I see what you are. You are too proud. But though you were the devil, you are fair. My lord and master loves you. Oh, such love could be but recompense, though you were crowned the not peril of beauty. How does he love me? With adoration's fertile tears, with groans that thunder love, with sighs of fire. Your Lord does know my mind. I cannot love him. Yet I suppose him virtuous, know him noble, a great estate, a fresh and stainless youth, in voices well divulged, free, learned, and valiant, in the dimension, in the shape of nature, a gracious person. But yet I cannot love him. He might have took his answer long ago. If I did love you in my master's flame, with such a suffering, such a deadly life, in your denial I would find no sense. I would not understand it. Why? What would you? Make me a willow cabin at your gate. And call upon my soul within the house. Write loyal cantons of condemned in love and sing them loud, even in the dead of night. Hallow your names through reverberant hills. Make the babbling gossip of the air cry out, oh! Livia. Oh, you should not rest between the elements of air and earth. But you should pity me. You might do much. 
What is your parentage? Uh, uh. Above my fortunes, yet my state is well. I am a gentleman. Get you to your lord. I cannot love him. Let him send no more. Unless you come to me again to tell me how he takes it. Very well. I thank you for your pains. Spend this for me. I am no feed post, lady. Keep your purse. My master, not myself, lacks recompense. Love make his heart a flint that you shall love. And let your fervor, like my master's, be placed in contempt. Farewell, fair cruelty. What is your parentage? <laughs> <laughs> Above my fortunes, yet my state is well. I am a gentleman. I'll be sworn thou art. Thy tongue, thy face, thy limbs, thy actions, and thy spirits give thee fivefold blazon. Not too fast. <laughs> soft, soft. <laughs> Unless the master were the man, how now, even so quickly, may one catch the play? He thinks I feel these youth's perfections with an invisible and subtle stealth to creep in at mine eyes. Well, let it be. What ho, Malvolio? Here, madam, at your service. Run after that same peevish messenger, the county's man. He left this ring behind him. Would I or no, tell him I'll none of it. Desire him not to flatter with his lord, nor hold him up with hopes. I am not for him. If that the youth will come this way tomorrow, I shall give him reasons for it. Hide thee, Malvolio. Madam, I will. I do I know not what, and fear to find mine eye too great a flatterer for my mind. Fate, show thy force. Ourselves we do not owe. What is decreed must be, and be this so. Stay no longer, nor will you not that I go with you. My impatience, no. My stars shine darkly over me. The malignancy of my fate might perhaps distemper yours. Therefore, I shall crave of you your leave that I may bear my evils alone. It were bad recompense for your love to lay any of them on you. Let me yet know whether you are bound. No, suit, sir. My determinate voyage is mere extravagancy. But I perceive in you so excellent a touch of modesty that you will not extort from me what I am willing to keep in. Therefore, it charges me in manners the rather to express myself. You must know of me then, Antonio. My name is Sebastian, which I call Rodrigo. My father was that Sebastian of Messaline, whom I know you have heard of. He left behind him myself and his sister, both born in an hour. If the heavens had been pleased, would we had so ended? But you, sir, altered that, for some hour before you took me from the breach of the sea, was my sister drowned. Alas, for that. A lady, sir, though who said she much resembled me, was yet of many accounted beautiful. But though I could not with such estimable wonder over far believe that, yet thus far I will boldly publish her. She bore a mind that envy could not recall fair. She is drowned already, sir, with salt water, though I seem to drown her remembrance again with more. Well, pardon me, sir, your bad entertainment. Oh, good Antonio, forgive me your trouble. If you will not murder me for my love, let me be your servant. If you will not undo what you have done, that is, kill him whom you have recovered, desire it not. Fare you well at once. My bosom is full of kindness, and... I am yet so near the manners of my mother that upon the least occasion more my eyes will tell tales of me. 
I am bound to the Count Orsino's court. Farewell. The gentleness of all the gods go with thee. I have many enemies in Orsino's court, else I would shortly see thee there. But come with me. I do adore thee so that danger shall seem sport, and I will go! Were not you even now with the Countess Olivia? Even now, sir? On a moderate pace, I have since arrived but hither. She returns this ring to you, sir. You might have saved me my pains to have taken it away yourself. She adds, moreover, that you should put your lord into a desperate assurance she will none of him. And one thing more, that you be never so hardy to come again in his affairs, unless it be to report your lord's taking of this. Receive it so. <laughs> she took the ring of me, or all none of it. Come, sir, you peevishly threw it to her, and her will is it should be so returned. If it be worth stooping for, there it lies in your eye. If not, be it his that finds it. <laughs> <laughs> No ring with her. What means this lady? Oh, fortune forbid my outside have not charmed her. She made good view of me. Indeed, so much that me thought. Her eyes had lost her tongue. She did speak and starts distractedly. She loves me, sure. <laughs> the cunning of her passion invites me in this churlish messenger. Oh, none of my lord's ring. Why, he sent her none. I am. The man. <laughs> if it be so, as tis. Oh, poor lady, she were better love a dream. Disguise, I see, thou art a wickedness, wherein the pregnant enemy does much. How easy is it for the proper false amendments waxen hearts to set their forms? Alas, our frailty is the cause, not we. For such as we are made of, such we be. How will this badge? My master loves her dearly, and I, poor monster, fond as much on him. And she, mistaken, <laughs> seems to dote on me. What will become of this? <laughs> as I am man, my state is desperate for my master's love. As I am woman, now last the day, what thriftless sighs shall poor Olivia breathe? Oh, time! Thou must untangle this, not I. It is too hard enough for me to untie. Uh. <laughs> Approach, Sir Andrew. Not to be a bed after midnight. Is to be up the times, and Diakum of Segura, thou knowest. Nay, by my truth, I know not. But I know to be up late is to be up late. <laughs> <laughs> A false conclusion. I hear there's an unfilled cap. To be up after midnight and to go to bed then is early. So, <laughs> that to go to bed after midnight is to go to bed betimes. Do our lives not consist of the four elements? Faith, so they say. But I rather <laughs> think they consist of eating and drinking. <laughs> Thou art a scholar. Let us therefore eat and drink. Mm. Uh, Marion, I say, a stoop of wine. Uh, oh, here comes the fool in faith. How now, my heart? <laughs> Did you never see the picture of we three? Oh, a welcome ass. Oh. Let's have a catch. By oh. my throat, the fool has an excellent rest. I would, I had rather than 40 shillings, I had such a leg, 
and so sweet a breath to sing as the fool has. And so thou wast in very gracious fooling last night when thou spoke of pigrogrammatus of the Vapians passing the equinoctial of Quayubus. <laughs> it's very good if it. Oh, I sent thee sixpence for thy lemon, hatched it. I did in Pentecost thy gratility. For Malvolio's nose is no whipstock, my lady has a white hand, and the Myrmidons are no bottle alehouses. Excellent! Why, this is the very best fooling when all this is done. <laughs> and now, a song. Come, there's ah, sixpence for thy lemons. Now, a song. Aye, aye. There's a test room of me, too. If one night give a... Do you have a love song <laughs> and a song of the light? A uh, love song. A love song. Aye. I care not for good life. to call thee knave knight. This is not the first time I've constrained one to call me knave. Come <laughs> He begins, hold thy peace. I shall never begin if I hold my peace. <laughs> Good effect. Come, begin. Hold thy peace, I pray thee. Hold thy peace, thou knave. Hold thy peace, I pray thee. Hold thy peace. Sanguinius, am I not of the lady's blood? Oh, Tilly Valley, lady, there dwelt! 
Madame Babylon, lady! <laughs> lady! Show me the knight's an admirable fooling. I does very well if he be disposed. And so do I, too. He does it with more grace, but uh, I do it more naturally. <laughs> <laughs> they have to stand the my true love get to me! I'm the last is that! Or what are you? Have you no wit? Manners, nor honesty, but to gabble like tinkers at this time of night. Do you make an alehouse of my lady's house that you squeak out your coziest catches without any mitigation or remorse of voice? Is there no respect of place, persons, nor time in you? Oh, we did keep time, sir, in our catches. <laughs> Snack up! Sir Toby, I must be round with you. <laughs> <laughs> My lady bade me tell you that, though she harbors you as her kinsman, she's nothing allied to your disorders. If you can separate yourself and your misdemeanors, you are welcome to the house. If not, and it would please you to take leave of her, she is very willing to bid you farewell. Farewell, dear hearts, for I must needs be gone. His eyes do show his days are so, almost done. But I will never die. So, is there you This are. is what credit to you. Shall I bid him go? What an No, 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 a stoop of wine, Mariah. Mistress Mary, if you prized my lady's favor at anything more than contempt, you would not give means for this uncivil rule. She shall know of it by this hand. <laughs> Go shake your ears! <laughs> When a man's a hungry, <coughs> to challenge him to feel, and then to break promise with him and make a fool out of him. <laughs> Do it, knight! I'll write thee a challenge. Or better yet, I'll <coughs> deliver thy indignation <laughs> to him by word of mouth. Wait, Sir Toby. Be patient, first knight. Since the youth of the Count's is today with my lady, she is much out of quiet. As for Monsieur Malvolio, let me alone with him. If I do not gull him into a neighbor and make him a common recreation, do not think I have wit enough to lie straight in my bed. I know I can do it. Well, possess us, possess us, tell us something of him. Mary, sir, sometimes he is a kind of puritan. Oh, then I thought that. I beat him like a dog. What? <laughs> <laughs> Being a puritan, my explicit reason, knight. I have no exqui exquisite reason for it. <laughs> but I have reason good enough. The devil a Puritan that he is, or anything constantly but a time pleaser. An affectioned ass that cons state without book, and utters it by great swaths. The best persuaded of himself, so crammed as he thinks, with excellencies, that it is his grounds of faith that all that look on him love him, and on that vice in him. Will my revenge find notable cause to work? What wilt thou do? I will drop in his way some obscure epistles of love, <gasps> wherein by the color of his beard, <laughs> the shape of his leg, the manner of his gait, the expression of his eye, forehead, and complexion, he shall find himself most feelingly personated. I can write very like my lady, your niece. On a forgotten matter, we can hardly make distinction of our hands. 
excellent. I smell a device. I have it in my nose, too. You shall think <laughs> by the letters that thou wilt drop that they come from my niece and that she's in love with him. My purpose is indeed a horse of that color. And your horse now would make him an ass. Ass? I doubt not. Oh, twill be admirable. Sport royal, I warrant you. I know my physical work with him. I will plant you two, and let the fool make a third, where he shall find the letter. Observe his construction of it. For this night to bed, and dream on the event. Farewell. Good night, Penthesilia. <laughs> Before me, she is a good wench. <laughs> She's a beagle true bread, and one that adores me. What of that? I was adored once, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's to bed, knight. Thou hadst need send for more money. Oh, if I cannot recover your niece, I am a foul way out. Thou oh, sent for money, knight. But thou hast him out in the end. Oh. Call me cut. And I do not. Never trust me. <laughs> Take that. How you will. Come, come. I'll go burn some sack. Oh. It's, it's too late to go to bed now. Oh. Come, knight. <laughs> come, knight. Oh. Oh. song we had last night, we thought it did relieve my passion much, more than light airs and recollected terms of these most brisk and kitty paced in times. Come, but one verse. He is not here, so please your lordship that should sing it. Who was it? Festy the jester, my lord, a fool that the lady Olivia's father took much delight in. He is about the house. Seek him out, and play the tune the while. Come hither, boy. If ever thou shalt love, in the sweet pangs of it remember me. For such as I am, all true lovers are, unstayed and skittish in all motions else, save in the constant image of the creature that is beloved. How dost thou like this tune? It gives a very echo to the seat where love is thrown. Thou dost speak masterly. My life upon. Young though thou art, thine eye hath stayed on some favor that it loves, has it not? A little, <laughs> by your favor. What kind of woman is? Of your complexion. She is not worth thee, then. <laughs> what years, if eight? About your years, <coughs> my lord. Too old, by heaven. Let still the woman take her, elder than herself. So where is she to him, so sways she level in her husband's heart. For a boy, however we do praise ourselves, our fancies are more giddy and unfirm, more longing, wavering, sooner lost and worn than women's are. I think it well, my lord. Then let thy love be younger than thyself, else thy affection cannot hold the bent. For women are as roses, whose fair flower being once displayed, Doth fall that very hour. And so they are. Alas, that they are so to die, even when to perfection grow. Oh, fellow, come. That song we had last night. Mark it, Cesario. It is old and plain. The spinsters and the knitters and the sun and the free maids that weave their thread with bones do use to chant it. It is silly sooth and dallies with the innocence of love like the old age. Are you ready, sir? Aye, prithee, sing. <laughs> come away, come away, dead. And in sad cypress let me be laid. Fly away. slain by a fair cruel 
my part of death. No one so true did share it. <laughs> not a flower, not a flower. My black coffin let there be strewn. <laughs> not a friend, not a friend greet. My poor corpse, where my bones shall be thrown, a thousand thousand sighs to say. Lay me aware, sad true lover, never find my grave to weep there. There's for thy pains. No pains, sir. I take pleasure in singing, sir. I'll pay thy pleasure, then. Truly, and pleasure will be paid one time or another. Give me now leave to leave thee. Now, the melancholy god protect thee, and the tailor make thy doublet of a changeable taffeta, for thy mind is a very opal. I would have men of such constancy put to sea that their business might be everything and their intent everywhere, for that's it that always makes a good voyage of nothing. Farewell. Let all the rest give place. Once more, Cesario, get thee to yon same sovereign cruelty. Tell her my love, more noble than the world, prizes not quantity of dirty lands. <laughs> the parts that fortune hath bestowed on her, tell her I hold as giddily as fortune. It is that miracle and queen of gems that nature pranks her and attracts my soul. But if she cannot love you, sir... I cannot be so answered. Sooth, but you must! Say that some lady, as perhaps there is, hath for your love a great a peg of heart as you have for Olivia. You cannot love her. You tell her so, but she not then be answered. There is no woman's sides can buy the beating of so strong a passion as love doth give my heart. No woman's heart so big to hold so much, they lack retention. Alas, their love may be called a, 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 a appetite, no motion of the liver but the palate that suffers surfeit, cloyment, and revolt. But mine is all as hungry as the sea and can digest as much. Make no compare between that love a woman can bear me and that I owe Olivia. Aye, but I know. What dost thou know? Too well what love women to men may owe. In faith they are as true of heart as we. My father had a daughter loved a man. As it might be, perhaps, were I a woman, I should your lordship. And what's her history? A blank, my lord. She never told her love, but let concealment, like a wormeth bud, feed on her damask cheek. She pined in thought, and with a green and yellow melancholy, she sat, like patience on a monument, smiling at grief. Was not this love indeed? We men may say more, swear more, but indeed our shows are more than will. For still we prove much in our vows, but little in our love. But died thy sister of her love, my boy. 
I am all the daughters of my father's house and all the brothers too. And yet I know not. Sir, shall I to this lady? Aye, that's the theme. To her in haste, give her this jewel. Say my love can give no place. By no denay. Mm. In your Fabian. Nay, I'll come. If I lose a scruple of this sport, let me be boiled to death with melancholy. Wouldst thou not be glad to see this niggardly rascally sheep biter come by some notable shame? I would exult, man. You know, he put me out of favor with my lady about a bear baiting here. <laughs> <laughs> to anger him, we'll have the bear again. And we shall fool him black and blue, will we not, Sir Andrew? And we do not. It is pity of our lives. Here comes the little villain. How now, my medal of India? Get you all three into the box tree. Malvolio's coming down this walk. He's been yonder at sun practicing behavior to his own shadow this half hour. Observe him for the love of mockery, for I know this letter will make a contemplative idiot of him. Close, in the name of jesting, lie thou there. For here comes the trout that must be caught with tickling. Tis but fortune. All is fortune. Mariah once told me she did affect me, and I have heard herself come thus near, that she should fancy it should be one of my complexion. Besides, she uses me with a more exalted respect than anyone else that follows her. What should I think on? Here's an overweening rogue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, peace. Contemplation makes a rare turkey cock of him. How he jets on his advanced wounds. So I think it's so beat the road. <laughs> to be Count Malvolio. <laughs> oh, oh, pistol him, pistol him, peace, peace. There is example for it. The lady of the straight she married the yeoman of the wardrobe. Fie on him! Just peace now he's deeply in. Look how imagination blows him. Having been three months married to her, Sitting in my state, oh, for a stone boat to hit him in the eye, calling my officers about me in my branched velvet gown, <laughs> <laughs> having come from a daybed where I have left Olivia <gasps> sleeping, fire <laughs> from stone, <laughs> and then to have the humor of state, and after a demure travel of regard, telling them I know my place as I would they should do theirs. To ask for my kinsman, Toby. Bolts and shackles. Peace now, now. Seven of my people, with an obedient start, make out for him. I frown the while and perchance wind up my watch or play with my. some rich jewel. Toby approaches, <laughs> curtsies there to me. Shall this fellow live? <laughs> I extend my hand to him thus, quenching my familiar smile with an austere regard of control. And does not Toby take you a blow with the lips then? Saying, cousin Toby, <laughs> my fortunes having cast me on your knees, give me this prerogative of speech. What? What? You must amend your drunken death. Oh, no, stop! We break the sinews of our plot. Besides, you waste the treasure of your time with a foolish knight. That's me, I warrant you. <laughs> <laughs> One of Sir Andrew. I knew it was I. <laughs> what disappointment have we here? Now is the woodcock near the gin? Oh, peace, and the spirits of humor's intimate reading aloud to him. By my life, this is my lady's hand. These be her very C's, her U's, N, her T's. <laughs> And thus makes she her great peas. <laughs> it is in contempt of question her hand. 
Her C's, her U's, and her T's? Why that? <laughs> <laughs> To the unknown beloved, this and my good wishes. Her very phrases, her by your leave, wax, soft, and the impressure, her new crease with which she uses to seal. Tis my lady. Oh, to whom should this be? This wins him liver and all. Jove knows I love, but who? Lips do not move. No man must know. No man must know. What follows? The number's altered. No man must know. If this should be thee, Malvolio! Oh! Mary, I'm rock. I may command where I adore, but silence like a Lucrece knife, with bloodless stroke my heart doth gore, M-O-A-I doth sway my life. Faustian riddle. Excellent wench, say I. M-O-A-I doth sway my life. Nay, but first, let me see, let me see, let me see. What dish of poison has she dressed in? I may command where I adore. Why, she may command me? I serve her, she is my lady. Why, this is evident to any formal capacity. There is no obstruction in this. In the end, what should that alphabetical position portend if I can make that resemble something in me? Softly, M, O, A. Make that up. He's now in a cold scent. And no man now Malvolio. And when that begins, my name. M. Oh, but then there is no consonancy in the sequel that suffers under probation. A should follow, but O does. O shall end, I hope. I or I shall cudgel him and make him cry. O. And then I comes behind. Aye, and you had any eye behind you? You might see more detraction at your heels than fortunes before you. Why? Maui. Moa. The simulation is not as the former. And yet, to crush this a little, it would bow to me, for every one of these letters are in my name. So here follows prose. If this fall into thy hand, revolve. <laughs> In my stars I am above thee, but be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. Thy fates open their hands, let thy blood and spirit embrace them. And, to inure thyself to what thou art like to be, cast thy humble slough and appear fresh. Be opposite with the kinsmen, surly with servants. Let thy tongue tang arguments of state. Put thyself into the trick of singularity. She thus advises thee that sighs for thee. Remember who commended thy yellow stockings and wished to see thee ever cross gartered. I say remember. Go to, thou art made, if thou desirest to be so. If not, let me see thee a steward still, the fellow of servants, and not worthy to touch fortune's fingers. Farewell, she that would alter services with thee, the fortunate unhappy. <laughs> oh, daylight and champagne discovers not more. This is open. I will be proud. I will read politic authors. I will baffle Sir Toby. I will wash off. Gross acquaintance, I will be point devise the very man. I do not now fool myself to let imagination jade me, for every reason excites to this that my lady loves me. She did commend my yellow stockings of late, she did praise my leg being cross gartered, and in this she manifests herself to my love, and with a kind of injunction drives me to these habits of her liking. I thank my stars. I am happy. <laughs> I will be strange, stout, in yellow stockings, even with the swiftness of putting on. Joe, and my stars be praised. <laughs> Thou canst not choose but know who I am. Duh. <laughs> if thou entertainst my love, let it appear in thy smiling. 
thy smiles become thee well. Therefore in my presence still smile, dear my sweet, I prithee. Jove, I thank thee. <laughs> mm, I will smile. <laughs> I will do everything that thou wilt have me. <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> Lose my part of this sport for a pension of thousands to be made from the sofa. Uh, I could marry this wench for this device. So could I, too. And ask no other dowry with her but such another jest. Nor I, neither. Here comes my noble gull catcher. Oh, wilt thou set thy foot on my neck? Uh, or, or am I neither? Shall I, <laughs> shall I lay my freedom at tray trip and become thy bond slave? I pay for I either? <laughs> I was put up in such a dream that when the image of it leaves him, he will surely run mad! Yea, but say true, does it work upon him? Oh, like Aqua Vitae with the midwife! If you will then see the fruits of the sport, mark his first approach before my lady. He will come to her in yellow stockings, and tis a color she abhors. And cross garnered a fashion she detests. And he will smile upon her, which will now be so unsuitable to her disposition, being addicted to a melancholy as she is, that it cannot but turn him into a notable contempt. <gasps> if you will see it, follow me. I to the gates of Tartar, the most excellent devil of wit. <laughs> <laughs> By the church. Art thou churchman? No such matter, sir. I do live by the church, for I do live at my house, and my house doth stand by the church. <laughs> so, thou mayest say the king lies by a beggar if a beggar dwell near him, or the church stands by thy taper if thy taper stands by the church. You have said, sir, to see this age, a sentence is but a chevril glove to a good wit. How quickly the wrong side may be turned outward. Uh, uh, nay, that certain. They that dally nicely with words may quickly make them wanton. I would, therefore, my sister had had no name, sir. Why, man? Why, sir, her name's a word, and to dally with that word might make my sister wanton. <laughs> but indeed, words are very rascals since bonds disgraced them. By reason, man? Troth, sir, I can yield you none without words, and words are grown so false, I am loath to prove reason with them. I word thou art a merry fellow and carest for nothing. Not so, sir. I do care for something, but in my conscience, sir, I do not care for you. If that be to care for nothing, sir, I would it would make you invisible. <laughs> Art thou not the Lady Olivia's fool? No, indeed, sir. The Lady Olivia has no folly. She will keep no fool, sir, till she be married. Ah. And fools are as like husbands as pilchers are to herrings. The husband's the bigger. I'm indeed not her fool, but her corrupter of words. Well, I saw thee late at the Count Orsino's. Foolery, sir, does walk about the orb like the sun. It shines everywhere. I would be sorry, sir, but the fool should be as oft with your master as with my mistress. I think I saw your wisdom there. Nay, and thou pass upon me, I'll no more with thee. Oh, hold, there's expenses for thee. Now Jove in his next commodity of hair send thee a beard. By my troth, I'll tell thee. I'm almost sick for one, though not have grown my chin. <laughs> Is that lady within? Would not a pair of these of bread, sir? Yes, being kept together and put to use. I would play Lord Pandarus of Phrygia, sir, to bring a precedent to this trophy. 
I understand you, sir. Tis well begged. The matter, I hope, is not great, sir, begging but a beggar. Cressida was a beggar. My lady is within. I will consternate to them whence you came. Who you are and what you would are out of my welkin. I might say element, but the word is overworn. Mm. <laughs> this fellow is wise enough to play the fool, and to do that well craves a kind of wit. He must observe their mood on whom he jests, the quality of person, and the time, and like the haggard, check it comes before his eye. Ha! <laughs> this is a practice as full of labor as a wise man's art. For folly that he wisely shows is fit. But wise men, folly fallen, quite taint their wit. Save you, gentlemen. And you, sir. <laughs> <clears throat> Do you vous garder, monsieur? Et vous aussi, votre service. <laughs> I hope, sir, you are, and I am yours. Um, <laughs> will you encounter the house? My niece is desirous you should enter, if your trade be to her. Well, I am bound to your niece, sir. I, I mean, she's the list of my voyage. Taste your legs, sir. Put them to motion. Uh, my legs do better understand me, sir, they, uh, than I understand what you mean by bidding me taste my legs. I mean to go, sir. To enter. Well, I will answer you with gate and entrance, uh, but we are prevented. Most excellently accomplished lady, the heavens rain odors on you. Thank you, it's a rare courtier. Rain odors? Well. My matter hath no voice, lady, but your almost pregnant and vouchsafed ear. Odors pregnant and vouchsafed? I'll get them all three already. <laughs> Let the garden door be shut and leave me to my hearing. <clears throat> <laughs> Give me your hand, sir. Uh, my duty, madam, and most humble service. What is your name? Cesario is your servant's name, fair princess. My servant? Twas never merry world since slowly feigning was called compliment. Your servant to the Count Orsino youth. And he is yours. And his must needs be yours. Your servant's servant is your servant, madam. For him, I think not on him. For his thoughts, would they were blanks rather than filled with me. Madam, I come to wet your gentle thoughts on his behalf. Oh, by your leave, I pray you. I beg you never speak again of him. But would you undertake another suit? I had rather hear you to solicit that than music from the spheres. Dear lady, Dear I leave, beseech you. I did send. After the last enchantment you did hear, a ring in chase of you. So did I abuse myself, my servant, and I fear me, you. Under your hard construction must I sit to force that on you in shameful cunning which you know none of yours. What might you think? Have you not set my honor at the stake and baited it with all the unmuzzled thoughts that tear in his heart can think? To one of your receiving, enough is shown. A cypress, not a bosom, hides my heart. So let me hear you speak. I pity you. That's a degree to love. No, <laughs> not a grind. For tis a vulgar proof that very oft we pity enemies. Why then methinks tis time to smile again. Oh, world. How apt to the poor are to be proud. If one should be a prey, how much the better to fall before the lion and the wolf. <coughs> the clock upbraids me with a waste of time. Be not afraid, good youth. I'll not have you. And yet when wit and youth are come to harvest, your wife is like to reap a proper man. There lies your way due west. Then westward ho. Grace and good disposition attend your ladyship. You <coughs> nothing, madam, to my lord by me? Stay! I prithee tell me what thou thinkst of me. That you do think you are not what you are. If I think so, I think the same of you. Then think you right, I am not what I am. I would you were as I would have you be. Would it be better, madam, than I am? I wish it might, for now I am your fool. Oh, what a deal of scorn looks beautiful, and the contempt and anger 
of his lip. A murderous guilt shows not itself more soon than love that would seem hid. Love's night is noon. Cesario, by the roses of the spring, by maidhood, truth, honor, and everything, I love thee so that maugre all thy pride, nor wit, nor reason can my passion hide. Do not extort thy reasons from this clause, for that I woo, thou therefore hast no cause, but rather reason thus, with reason better. Love's shot is good, but given unshot is better. By innocence I swear, and by my youth, I have one heart, one bosom, and one truth. And that no woman has, nor never none shall mistress be in that same eye alone. And so adieu, good madam. Never more will I my master's tears to you deplore. Yet come again, for thou perhaps may smooth that heart which now abhors to like his love. Thy reason, dear Venom, give thy reason. You must needs yield your reason, Sir Andrew. Mary, I saw your niece do more with the Count's serving man than ever she bestowed upon me. I saw it in the orchard. Have you seen these a while, old boy? Tell me that. As plain as I see you now. This was a great argument of love in her towards you. Slight! Will you make an ass of me? I will prove it legitimate, sir, upon the oaths of judgment and reason. And they have been grand jurymen since before Noah was a sailor. <laughs> She did show favor to the youth in your sight, only to exasperate you, to awake your dormouse valor, to put fire in your heart and brimstone in your liver. You should then have accosted her. And with some excellent jests, fire new from the mint, you should have banged the youth into dumbness. This was looked for at your hand. This was balked. The double guilt of this opportunity you let time wash off, and you are now sailed into the north of my lady's opinion where you will hang like an icicle on a Dutchman's beard. Unless you do redeem it by some laudable attempt, either of valor or policy. And if it be any way, it must be with valor. For policy I hate. I had as lief be a Puritan as a politician. But why then build me thy fortunes upon the basis of valor? Challenge me the Count's youth to fight with him. Hurt him in eleven places. My niece shall take note of it and assure thyself there is no love broker in the world <coughs> can more prevail in man's commendation with women than report of valor. There is no way but this, Sir Andrew. Will either of you bear me a challenge to him? <laughs> Go, write it in the martial hand. Be cursed and brief. It is no matter how witty, so it is at long to be ex eloquent and full of invention. Taunt him with the license of ink. If thou vowest him some thrice, it shall not be amiss. And as many lies as will lie in thy sheet of paper, set them down about it. Let there be gall enough in thy ink, though thou write with a goose pen, no matter about it. Where will I find you? We shall call thee at the cubiculo. This is a dear mannequin to you, Sir Toby. I have been dear to him, lad, some two thousand strong or so. <laughs> we shall have a rare letter from him, but you'll not deliver it. <laughs> Never trust me, then. And uh, as for the youth, stir him on to an answer. I think oxen and wain ropes cannot hail them together. As for Andrew, if he were cut open, and you find as much blood in his liver as will clog the foot of a flea, I'll eat the rest of the anatomy. <laughs> his opposite, the youth bears in his visage no great presence of cruelty. Ah, look where the youngest friend of mine comes. If you desire the spleen and will laugh yourselves into stitches, follow me. Young Golmavolio is turned heathen, a very renegado. There is no Christian that means to be saved by believing rightly, can ever believe such impossible passages of grossness. He's in yellow stockings! <laughs> and cross guarded Most villainously, like a pedant that keeps a school in church. I have dogged him like his murderer. He does obey every point of the letter I dropped to betray him. He does smile his face into more lines than is in the new map of the augmentation of the Indies. You have not seen such a thing as tis. I can hardly forbear hurling things at him. I know my lady will strike him. If she do, 
He'll smile and take it for a great favor. Come, bring us, bring us where he is. I would not by my will have troubled you, but since you make your pleasure of your pains, I will no further charge you. I could not stay behind you. My desire more sharp than violent steel did spur me forth. And not all love to see you. Though so much as might have drawn one to a longer voyage. But jealousy, what might befall your travel? Being skinless in these parts, which to a stranger, unguided and unfriended, often prove rough and unhospitable. My willing love, but rather by these arguments of fear, set forth in your pursuit. My kind Antonio, I can no other answer make but thanks and thanks and ever thanks. And off good terms are shuffled off with such uncurrent pay, but were my worth, as is my conscience firm, you should find better dealing. <laughs> um, what's to do? Shall we see the relics of this town? Tomorrow, sir. Best first go see your lodging. Well, I am not weary and tis long tonight. I pray you, let us satisfy our eyes with the memorials and the things of fame that you renown the city. Would you depart it? I do not without danger walk these streets. Once in a sea fight against the count, his galleys, I did some service. Of such note, indeed, that were I taken here, it would scarce be answered. Belike you slew great number of his people? The offense is not of such a bloody nature, albeit the quality and time of quarrel might have given us bloody argument. It might have since been answered in repaying what we took from them, which for traffic's sake most of our city did. Only myself stood out, for which if I be lapsed in this place, I shall pay dear. Do not then walk too open. It doth not fit me. <laughs> oh, oh, sir. Here is my purse. In the south suburbs of the elephant is best to lodge. I will bespeak our diet. Well, you go and beguile the time and feed your knowledge with viewing of the town. There shall you find. Why I your purse? Well, happily your eye shall light upon some toy you desire to purchase. And your store, I think, is not for idle markets, sir. I'll be your purse bearer and leave you for an hour. To the elephant. I do remember. I have sent half to him. He says he'll come. How shall I feast him? What bestow of him? For youth is bought more often begged or borrowed. I speak too loud. Where's my volume? He is sad and civil and suits well for a servant with my fortunes. Where is Malvolio? He's coming, madam, but in a very strange manner. <laughs> he is sure possessed, madam. Why? What's the matter? Doth he rage? No, madam. He does nothing but smile. Your ladyship were best to have some guard about you if he do, for sure the man is tainted in his wits. Go, call him hither. I am as mad as he is sad, and very mad as <laughs> 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 Oh, now, Malvolio. <laughs> Sweet lady, how, how? <laughs> I sit with you on a sad occasion. Sad, lady? Oh, I could be sad. This does make some obstruction in the blood, this cross gartering. But what of that? If it please the eye of one, it is with me as the very true sonnet is. Please one, <laughs> please all none. No. How dost thou, man? What's the matter with thee? Not black in my mind, though yellow in my leg. <laughs> <laughs> it did come to his hands, and commands shall be executed. <laughs> I think we do know the sweet Roman hand. Let's all go to bed now, Volio. <laughs> to bed? I, sweetheart, and I'll come to thee. <laughs> God comfort thee. My smile, son. Keep thy hand so off. How do you, Malvolio? At your request? Yes, Nightingale's answer does. Why appear you with this ridiculous boldness before my lady? Be not afraid of greatness. <laughs> Twas well writ. What means thou by that, Malvolio? Some are born great. Huh? Some achieve greatness. What sayest thou? And some have greatness thrust <laughs> upon them. <laughs> mm. How oh. do you store thee? Oh. From 
remember who commended thy yellow stockings? The yellow stockings? And wish to see thee cross garters. Cross garters? Go to, thou art maid, if thou desirest to be so. Am I maid? If not, let me see thee a servant still. <laughs> Summer madness. <laughs> <laughs> Madam, the young gentleman. <laughs> the young gentleman of the Count Rosinas has returned. I can hardly entreat him back. <laughs> the attention, ladies, with pleasure. I'll come to him. Good Mariah, let this fellow be looked to. Where's my cousin Toby? But some of our people have special care of him. I would not have him miss scary for the half of my dowry. <laughs> oh, do you come near me now? No worse man than Sir Toby to look to me. This concurs directly with the letter. She sends him on purpose that I may appear stubborn to him, for she incites me to that in the letter. Cast thy humble slough, says she. Be opposite to the kinsman, surly with servants. Let thy tongue tang with arguments of state. Put thyself into the trick of singularity. I have limed her. Oh, but it is Jove's doing, and Jove make me thankful. <laughs> then when she went away now, let this fellow be looked to. Hello, not Malvolio, nor after my degree, but fellow. <laughs> Why, everything adheres together, that no dram of a scruple, no scruple of a scruple, no obstacle, no incredulous or unsafe circumstance. What can be said? Nothing that can be can come between me and the full prospect of my hope. Well, Jove, not I, is the doer of this, and he is to be thanked. Which way is he in the name of sanctity? If all the devils of hell be drawn in little and legion of self possess him, yet I'll speak with him. Here he is, here he is. I'll rest with you, sir. I'll rest with you, man. Go off. I discard you. Let me enjoy my private. Go on. Lo, how hollow the fiend speaks within him. Did not I tell you, Sir Toby? My lady prays you to have a care of him. Aha, uh -huh, does she so? Go to, go to, peace, peace. We must deal with him gently. Let me alone with him. How do you, Malvolio? How is with you? What man defy the devil? Consider he's an enemy to mankind. Do you know what you say? Are you, and you speak ill of the devil. How he takes it at heart. Pray God, he be not bewitched. <sighs> Carry his water to the wise woman. Marry, and it shall be done tomorrow morning if I live. My lady would not lose him for more than I'll say. How now, mistress? Oh, Lord! Now, pray me, hold thy peace. This is not the way. Do you not see you move him? Let me alone with him. No way, but gentleness. Gently, gently. The fiend is rough. <laughs> <laughs> Why, how now, my buckock? How dost thou, Chuck? Sir, I bid thee come with me. But what, man? Tis not for gravity to play at cherry pit with Satan. Hang him, Falcolia. Get him to say his prayers, Sir Toby. Get him to pray. My prayers mean so. Oh, no, I warned you. He will not hear of godliness. Go hang yourselves all. You are idle, shallow <laughs> things. I am not of your element. You shall know more hereafter. <laughs> it's possible! If this were played upon the stage now, I could condemn it as an improbable fiction. <laughs> His very genius hath taken the invention of the device, man! Nay, pursue him now, lest the device take air and change. Why, we shall make him mad indeed. The house will be the quieter. Well, come, we'll have him in a dark room and bound. My niece is already in the belief that he's mad. We may carry it thus for our pleasure and his penance, till our very uh, uh, misfortune, tired out of breath, prompts us to have mercy on him. At which point, we will take the device to the bar and crown thee a finder of madmen. <laughs> oh, but see, but see. More matter for a May morning. <laughs> Here's the challenge. 
Regent, I warrant there's vinegar and pepper in. He's so saucy. I is. <laughs> I warrant him. Do but read. Kiss me. <clears throat> Youth, <clears throat> whatsoever thou art, thou art but a scurvy fellow. Good and valiant. Wonder not, nor admire not in thy mind why I do call thee so, for I will show thee no reason for it. A good note that keeps you from the blow of the law. Thou comest to the Lady Olivia, and in my sight she uses thee kindly, but thou liest in thy throat. <laughs> that is not the matter I challenge thee for. Very brief, and to exceeding good sense. <laughs> Bless. Uh, I will waylay thee going home, where if it be thy chance to kill me, good. Thou killest me like a rogue and a villain. Still you keep on the windy side of the law. Good. Fare thee well, and may God have mercy upon one of our souls. He may have mercy upon mine, but my hope is better, and so look to thyself. Thy friend as thou usest him? <laughs> and thy sworn enemy, Andrew Agitcheek. If this letter move him not, his legs cannot. I'll give to him. You may have very fit occasion for it. He is now in some commerce with my lady, and will by and by depart. Go, oh, Sir Andrew, scout before him at the corner of the orchard like a bum bailey. So soon as ever thou seest him, draw, and as thou drawst, swear horribly. <coughs> for it comes to pass off that a terrible oath with a swaggering accent sharply twanged off gives manhood more approbation than ever proof itself would have earned him. Away! Uh, nay, let me alone for swearing! <laughs> now will I not deliver his letter? For the behavior of the young gentleman gives him out to be of good capacity and breeding. His employment between his lord and my niece confirms no less. Therefore, this letter, being so excellently ignorant, will strike no terror in the youth. He'll find it comes from a clawed pole. But, sir, I'll deliver his challenge by word of mouth. Set upon Aggie Cheek a notable report of valor, and drive the gentleman, as I know his youth will aptly receive it, into a hideous opinion of rage, skill, fury, and impetuosity. This will so fright them both that they will kill one another by the look like cockatrices. Here he comes with your niece. Give them way till he take leave, then presently after him. I will meditate the while upon some horrid message for the challenge. I have set too much unto a heart of stone, and laid mine honor to uncherry art. There is something in me that reproves my fault, but such a headstrong, potent fault it is that it but mocks reproof. With the same behavior that your passion bears, goes on my master's griefs. Here, wear this jewel for me. Tis my picture, refuse it not, it hath no tongue to vex you. I beseech you, come this way tomorrow. But shall you ask of me that I'll deny, that honor shave may upon asking give? Nothing but this, your true love for my master. How, with mine honor, can I give him that which I have given you? I will acquit you. Well, come again tomorrow. Fare you well. A fiend like thee might spare my soul to hell. Gentlemen! Ah! God save thee! And you, sir? That defense thou hast, but take me to it. Of what nature the wrongs are thou hast done him, I know not. But thy interceptor, full of despite, Bloody as the hunter, attends thee at the orchard's end. Dismount thy tuck, be ere in thy preparation, for thy assailant is quick, skillful, and deadly. You mistake, sir. I'm sure no man hath any quarrel to me. My remembrance is very free and clear of any image of offense done to any man. You'll find it otherwise, I assure you. Therefore, get you, but take you to your guard, for your opposite hath in him what youth, strength, skill, and wrath can furnish man with all. I pray you, sir, what is he? He is a knight dubbed with unhatched rapier and on carpet consideration, but he's a devil in a private brawl. Souls and bodies have he divorced, and his incensement at this moment is so implacable that satisfaction can be none but by pangs of death and sepulchre. How knob is his word? Give it or take it. I shall. 
Ralph returned again into the house and desired some conduct of the lady. I am no fighter. I have heard of some kind of men who put gross purposely on others to taste their valor. Uh, be like this is a man of that court. Sir, no. You'll find his indignation derives itself out of a most competent injury. Therefore, get you on and give him his desire. Back you shall not to the house. <laughs> Unless you undertake that with me, with which as much safety you might answer him. Get you on, or strip your sword stark naked, for metals you must, that's certain, or for swear to wear iron about you. This is as uncivil as strange, I beseech you. Do me the courteous office as to know who my knight what my offense to him is. It is something of my negligence, nothing of my purpose. I will do so. Oh, Signor Fabian, stay you by this gentleman till my return. Pray, sir, do you know of this matter? I know the knight is incensed against you, even to a mortal arbitrament, but nothing of the circumstance more. Oh. I pray you, what manner of man is he? Nothing of that wonderful promise to read him by his form, as you are like to find him in the proof of his valor. Oh. He is indeed, sir, the most skillful, bloody, and fatal opposite you could possibly have found in any part of Illyria. <laughs> Will you walk towards him? Uh -uh. <laughs> Make your peace with him if I can. Oh, I shall be much bound to you for it. <laughs> I am one that rather know Sir Priest than Sir Knight. I care not who knows so much of my metal. Why, he's a very devil! I have never seen such a farrago! I had a pass with him, rapier, scabbard, and all, and he gives me the stuck end with such a mortal motion that it is inevitable. And to the answer, he pays you as surely as your feet hits the ground they step on. They say he has been a fencer to the Sophie. Who, oh, Paxant? I'll not meddle with him. Aye, but he will not now be pacified. Fabian can scarce hold him yonder. Oh, plague on't! And I thought him valiant and so cunning in fence. I'd see him damn there, I'd have challenged him. Let him let the matter slip, and I I'll give him my horse, great capulet. I'll make the motion. Stand here and make the charmant. This shall end without the perdition of souls. <laughs> <laughs> I'll ride your horse as well as I ride you. <laughs> 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 To take up the I have persuaded him to use a devil. He is as conceited of him in pants and looks pale as if a bear were at his heels. <laughs> Come, sir, there's no remedy. He will, for his own sake, have one bout with you. Mary, he better bethought him of his quarrel, and he finds that scarce to be worth talking of now. So draw in support of his bow. He protests he will not hurt you. Pray God defend me. A little thing would make me tell them how much I lack of a man. Give ground if you seem furious. <laughs> <laughs> Come, Sir Andrew, there's no remedy. Oh. The gentleman will, for his honor's sake, have but one bow with you. He cannot by the duel avoid it. Mary, he did promise me, as he is a soldier and a gentleman, he will not hurt you. Come on. Two, two, oh, pray God he keep us off. And to assure it is against my will. Ah! If this young gentleman have done offense, I take the fault on me. If you offend him, I for him defy you. <laughs> <laughs> you, sir, why, what are you? One, sir, that for his love dares yet to more than you have heard him brag to you, he will. Nay, if you be an undertaker, I am for you. Oh, no. Officer, don't be hold. Here come the officers. I'll be with you anon. Please, sir, put your sword up with you, please. Oh, Mary, will I, sir? And for that I promised you. He'll bear you easily, your brains well. This is the man. Do thy office. Antonio, I arrest thee at the shoot of Count Orsino. You do mistake me, sir. No, sir, no job. I know your favor well, though now you have no sea cap on your head. Take him away. He knows I know him well. I must obey. This comes with seeking you, but there is no remedy. I shall answer it. What will you do? Now my necessity makes me to ask you for my purse. It grieves me much more for what I cannot do for you than what befalls myself. You stand amazed, but be of comfort. Come, sir, I pray you go. I must entreat of you some of that money. What money, sir? For the fair 
kindness you have showed me here in part being prompted by your present trouble, out of my lean and low ability, I'll lend you something. My having is not much. I'll make division of my present with you. Hold. There's half my coffer. Well, you deny me now. Is it possible that my deserts to you can lack persuasion? Do not tempt my misery, lest that it make me so unsound to man as to unfrave you those kindnesses that I have done for you. I know of none. No, nor I you by voice or any feature. I hate ingratitude more in the man than lying, vainness, babbling, drunkenness, or any taint device whose strong corruption inhabits our frail blind. Oh, heavens themselves. Come, sir, away. Let me speak a little. This youth that you see here, I snatched one half out of the jaws of death, relieved him with such sanctity of love, and to his image, which we thought did promise most venerable worth, did I devotion. What's that to us? The time goes by. Away! But oh, how vile and idle proves this god! Thou hast, Sebastian, done good feature shame. In nature there's no blemish but the mind. None can be called deformed but the unkind. Virtue is beauty, but the beauty is evil. Our empty trunks are forged by the devil. The man grows mad. Away with him. Come! Come, sir! Lead me on. Methinks his words do from such passion fly that he believes himself. So do not I. Prove true, imagination, oh, prove true, that I, dear brother, be now tame for you. He named Sebastian. I, my brother, know yet living in my glass. Even such and so, in favor was my brother. And he went, still in this fashion, color, ornament. For him I imitate. Oh, if it prove tempests are kind, and so which rush in love! A very dishonest and paltry boy, and more a coward than a hare. His dishonesty appears here in leaving his friend in necessity and denying him, and for his cowardship, well, ask Fabian. A coward. A most devout coward. Religious in it. <laughs> Slid! I'll after him again and beat him! <laughs> do cuff him soundly, but never draw thy sword. <laughs> and I do not! <laughs> Come, let's see the event. I dare lay anything. Twill be nothing yet. Will you make me believe I am not sent for you? Go to, go to. Thou art a foolish fellow. Let me be clear of thee. Well held out, if faith. No, I do not know you, nor I am not sent to you by my lady to bid you come speak with her. Nor your name is not Master Cesario, nor this is not my nose, neither. Nothing that is so is so. I prithee vent thy folly somewhere else. Thou knowst not me. Vent my folly? He has heard that word of some great man and now applies it to a fool. Vent my folly? I'm afraid this great lover of the world will prove a cockney. I prithee now, ungird thy strangeness, and tell me what I shall vent to my lady. Shall I vent to her that thou art coming? I prithee, <laughs> foolish Greek, depart from me. There's money for thee. Ooh. <laughs> if you tarry longer, I shall give worse payment. By my troth, sir, thou hast an open hand. These wise men that give fools money get themselves a good report. <laughs> <laughs> now, sir, have I met you again? Why, there's for you. <laughs> Why? Oh, and there! And there! Wait, are all the people mad? Hold, <laughs> sir, or I'll throw your dagger over the house! This will I tell my lady straight, so I will not be in some of your coats for two pounds. Oh, come, sir! Hold! Hey, let him alone! I'll go another way to work with him. I'll have an action of battery against him, if there be any law in the area. So I struck him first. Ah! Yeah! Yeah! There's no battle for that! Let go my hand! Come, sir, I'll not let you go! Come, young soldier, put up your iron! You are well flushed! Come on! I will be free from thee! What wouldst thou now? If thou darest, tempt me further, draw thy sword! What? What? <laughs> I must 
must have an ounce or two of this malapert blood from you! Help! Toby, on thy life, I charge thee, hold! <laughs> Madam! Will it ever be thus? Ungracious wretch, fit for the mountains and the barbarous caves, where manners ne'er were preached, out of my sight. Be not offended, dear Cesario. Prove this be, be <laughs> 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 Gentle friend, let thy fair passion, not thy wisdom, sway in this uncivil and unjust extent against thy peace. Go with me to my house, and hear thou there how many fruitless pranks this ruffian hath botched up, that thou thereby may smile at this. Thou shalt not choose but go. Do not deny, beshrew his soul for me. He started one poor heart of mine into me. <laughs> How runs the stream? For I am mad, or else this is a dream. <laughs> Let fancy still my sense in leaf steep. If it be thus to dream, still let me sleep. <laughs> Come, I prithee, wouldst thou be ruled by me? Madam, I will. <laughs> oh, say so, and so be. <laughs> Make him believe thou art Sir Topas the curate. Oh. Do it quickly. I'll call Sir Toby the wiles. <clears throat> well, I'll put it on, and I will dissemble myself in it. And I would I were the first that ever dissembled in such a gown. I'm not tall enough to become the function well, nor thick enough to be thought a good student. But to be said an honest man and a careful scholar, goes as fairly as to say, a good man, a good housekeeper. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> the competitors enter. Jove bless thee, Master Parson. Nor does die as Sir Toby, for as the old hermit of Prague that never saw pen and ink, very wittily said to any of King Gorbaduck, that that is is. So I, being Master Parson, am Master Parson, for what is that but that and is but is. Uh, to him, Sir Thomas. <clears throat> what ho I say? Peace. <laughs> In this prison. <laughs> who calls there? Sir Topas the curate, who comes to visit Malvolio the lunatic. Sir Topas, Sir Topas, good Sir Topas, go to my lady. Oh, she hyperbolical fiend! Talkst thou nothing but of ladies? <laughs> Sir Topas, never was man thus wronged. Good Sir Topas, do not think I am mad. They have laid me here in hideous darkness. Fire, thou uh, dishonest Satan! I call thee by the most modest terms, for I am one of those gentle ones, and we use the devil himself with courtesy. <laughs> Sayest thou that house is dark? As hell, Sir Topas. Why, it hath bay windows transparent as barricados, and the cloistry is toward the south wall that is lustrous as ebony. And yet complaints of obstruction. I am not mad, Sir Topas. I say to you, this house is dark. There is no darkness but ignorance, in which thou art more puzzled than the Egyptians in their fall. I say this house is as dark as ignorance, though ignorance were as dark as hell. And I say there was never man thus abused. I am no more mad than you are. Make the trial of it in any constant question. What? Is the opinion of Pythagoras concerning wild fowl? That the soul of our grandam might happily inhabit a bird. What thinkst thou of his opinion? I think nobly of the soul, that no way approve his opinion. Fare thee well! Remain thou still in darkness. Thou shalt hold the opinion of Pythagoras, for I will allow thy wit. And fear to kill a woodcock, lest thou disposes the soul of thy grandam. Fare thee well! Sir Topas, Sir Topas! Most exquisite, Sir Topas. There, for all water. Thou mightst have done this without thy beard and gown. He sees thee not. Oh, to him in thine own voice, and bring me word how thou findest him. I would we were well rid of this knavery. If he may be conveniently delivered, I would he were, for I am now so far in offense of my niece that I cannot with any safety pursue this sport in the upshot. Come by and by to my bedchamber. Hey, 
Robin, Jolly Robin, tell me how thy lady does. Fool. My lady is unkind for thee. Fool. That's why is she so? Fool, I shall another. <laughs> Who calls, huh? Oh, good fool. As ever thou wilt deserve well at my hand, help me to a candle, pen, pen, ink, and paper. As I am a gentleman, I will live to be thankful to thee for it. Master Belvolio. Aye, good fool. Alas, sir, how fell you besides your five wits? Oh, fool, there was never man so notoriously abused. I am as well in my wits, fool, as thou art. But as well? Then you are mad indeed if you be no better in your wits than a fool. You have here property in me, keep me in darkness, and ministers to me asses, and do all they can to face me out of my wits. Advise you what you say, sir. The minister is here. Malvolio, Malvolio, thy wits the heavens restore. Endeavor thyself to sleep and leave thy vain bibble babble. Mr. Topas, maintain no words with him, good fellow. Who, I, sir? Not I, sir. God by you, good Sir Topas. Mary, amen. I will, sir. Will. Will, 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 I say? Alas, sir, be patient. What say you, sir? And shent for speaking to you. A good fool, help me to some light and some paper. I tell thee, I am as well in my wits as any man in Illyria. Well a day that you were, sir. B by this hand I am! <laughs> good fool, some ink, paper, and light, and convey what I will set down to my lady. It shall advantage thee more than ever the bearing of letter did. I will help you, Toot. But, tell me true, are you not mad indeed, or do you but counterfeit? Oh, believe me, I am not, I tell thee true. Nay, I'll never believe a madman till I see his brains. I'll fetch you light and paper and ink. <coughs> fool, fool requited to the highest degree, I pray thee be gone. Like to the old vice, your need to sustain with dagger of laugh in his rage and wrath. Cry aha to the devil, like a mad lad, pair thy nails, dad. <laughs> Adieu, good man, devil. that enwraps me thus, yet tis not madness. Where is Antonio, then? I could not find him at the elephant, yet there he was, and there I found this credit that he did range the town to seek me out. His counsel now might do me golden service, for though my soul disputes well with my sense that this may be some error, but no madness, yet Doth this accident and flood of fortune so far exceed all instance, all discourse, that I am ready to distrust my eyes and wrangle with my reason that persuades me to any other trust but that I am mad? <laughs> or else the lady's mad. Yet, if it were so, she could not sway her house, command her followers, take and give back affairs and their dispatch with such a smooth discreet and stable bearing, as I perceive she does. 
there's something in it that is deceivable. But here the lady comes. <laughs> Blame not a case of mine, if you mean well. Now, go with me and this holy man into the shantry by. There before him and underneath that consecrated roof, let me the full assurance of your faith that my most jealous and too doubtful soul may live at peace. He shall conceal it, whilst you are willing it shall come to note, what time we will our celebration keep according to my birth. What do you say? I'll follow this good man and go with you, and having sworn truth, ever will be true. Then lead the way, good father, and heaven so shine, that they may barely note this act of mine. Now, as thou lovest me, let me see this letter. Good Master Fabian, grant me another request. Anything. Do not desire to see this letter. This is to give a dog and in recompense desire my dog again. Belong you to the Lady Olivia, friends. <laughs> Aye, sir, we are some of her trappings. I know thee well. How dost thou, my good fellow? Truly, sir, the better for my foes and the worse for my friends. Just the contrary, the better for thy friends. No, sir, the worse. How can that be? Mary, sir, they praise me and make an ass of me. Now my foes tell me plainly I am an ass, so that by my foes, sir, I profit in the knowledge of myself, and by my friends I am abused. So that, conclusions to be as kisses, if your four negatives make it two affirmatives, why then the worse for my friends and the better for my foes. <laughs> why, this is excellent. Mm, by my troth, sir, no, though it please you to be one of my friends. Thou shalt not be worse for me, there's gold. <laughs> But that it would be double dealing, sir, I would you could make it another. Oh, you give me ill counsel. Put your grace in your pocket, sir, for this once, and let your flesh and blood obey it. Well, I'll be so much a sinner to be a double dealer. There's another. Primo secundo tertio is a good play. <laughs> <laughs> and the old saying is, the third pays for all. The triplex, sir, is a good tripping measure. Or the bells of St. Bennett, sir, may put you in mind. One, two, three. <laughs> you can fool no more money out of me at this throw. <laughs> but if you will tell your lady that I am here to speak with her and bring her along with you, it may awake my bounty further. Mary, sir, lullaby to your bounty till I come again. I go, sir, but I would not have you to know what my desire of having is the sin of covetousness. But as you say, sir, let your bounty take a nap. I will awake it anon. <laughs> Here comes the man, sir, that did rescue me. That face of his I do remember well. Yet when I saw it last, it was besmeared as black as Vulcan in the smoke of war. A bobbling vessel was he captain of, for shallow draft and bulk unprizable, with which such scatheful grapple did he make with the most noble bottom of our fleet, that very envy in the tongue of loss cried fame and honor on him. What's the matter? Orsino, this is that Antonio that took the phoenix and her freight from Candy. And this is he that did the tiger board when your young nephew Titus lost his leg. Here in the streets, desperate of shame and state, in private bramble did be apprehend him. He did me kindness, sir, jewel on my side. But in conclusion, but strange speech upon me, I know not what. Twas but distraction. Notable pirate. Thou salt water thief, what foolish boldness brought thee to their mercies, whom thou in terms so bloody and so dear hast made thine enemies? Or see no noble sir, be pleased that I shake off these names you give me. Antonio never yet was thief or pirate, though I confess on base and ground enough Orsino's enemy. A witchcraft drew me hither. That most ungrateful boy there by your side? From the rude seas enraged, and foamy mouth did I redeem. A rock past hope he was. His life I gave him, and did thereto add my love, without retention or restraint, all his in dedication. For his sake did I expose myself, pure for his love. 
into the danger of this adverse town, drew to defend him when he was beset, where, being apprehended, his false cunning, not meaning to partake with me in danger, taught him to face me out of his acquaintance and through a twenty years remove a thing while one would wink, denied me mine own curse, which I had recommended to his use not a half an hour before. How can this be? When came he to this town? Today, my lord, and for three months before. No interim, not a minute's vacancy. Both day and night did we keep coming. Here comes the countess. Now heaven walks on earth. But for thee, fellow, fellow, thy words are madness. Three months this youth hath tended upon me, but more of that anon, take him aside. What good, my lord, but that he may not have, when Olivia may seem serviceable? Cesaro, you do not keep promise with me, madam. Gracious Olivia. What do you say, Cesario? Good, my lord. My lord would speak. My duty hushes me. If it be aught to the same tune, my lord, it is as fat and fulsome to mine ears as howling after music. Still so cruel. Still so constant, lord. What to perverseness, you uncivil lady, to whose ingrate and unauspicious altars my soul, the faithfulest offerings, have breathed out that their devotion tendered. What shall I do? Even what it please, my lord, that shall become him. Why should I not? <coughs> Had I the heart to do it, like to the Egyptian thief at point of death, kill what I love. A savage jealousy that sometimes savors nobly. But hear me this. Since you to non-regard has cast my faith, and that I partly know the instrument that screws me for my true place in your favor, live you the marble-breasted tyrant still. But this, your minion, whom I know you love, and whom by heaven I swear I tender dearly, him will I tear out of that cruel eye where he sits crowded in his master's spite. Come boy with me. My thoughts are ripe in mischief. I'll sacrifice the lamb that I do love to spite a raven's heart within a dove. And I most chalk and apt and willing to do you rest a thousand deaths would die. Where goes Cesaro? After him I love. More than I love these eyes, more than my life. More by all wars than e'er I shall love wife. If I do vain, you witnesses above, punish my life for tainting of my love. No, oh, I me detest it. How am I beguiled? Who does beguile you? Who does do you wrong? Hast thou forgot thyself? Is it so long? Call forth the Holy Father. Come away. Whither, my lord, Cesario, husband, say. <laughs> husband? <laughs> No, I, my lord, not I. Alas, it is the baseness of thy fear that makes thee strangle thy propriety. Do not fear, Cesario. Take thy fortunes up. Be that thou knowest thou art. And then thou art as great as thou thou fearest. Welcome, father. Father, I charge thee here by thy reverence to unfold, though Lately we intended to keep in darkness what occurrence now reveals before tis right. What thou dost know hath newly passed between this youth and me. A contract of eternal bond of love! <laughs> Confirmed by the mutual joinder of your hands, attested by the holy close of lips, <laughs> <laughs> strengthened by the interchangement of your rings. And all the ceremony of this function, sealed in my function, by my testimony. Since when? My watch hath told me. Toward my grave. I have but traveled two hours. <laughs> oh, that dissembling cub. What wilt thou be when time hath so to grizzle on thy case? Or while else thy craft so quickly grow that thine own trip shall be thine overthrow? <laughs> Farewell and take her, but direct thy feet, where thou and I henceforth may never meet. My lord, I do oh, not do that. I swear. Hold a little faith, though thou hast too much fear. For the love of God, a certain, said one presently to Sir Toby. What's the matter? Has broke my head across, and given Sir Toby a bloody coxcomb too. Oh, for the love of God, your help. 
rather than 40 pound I were at home. Who has done this, Sir Andrew? Oh, the Count's gentleman, one Cesario. We took him for a coward, but he's the very devil in Cardinet. My gentleman, <laughs> Cesario. Oh, it's like Lynch. There he is. <laughs> you broke my head for nothing. And that that I did, I was set on to do it by Sir Toby. Why do you speak to me? I've never hurt you. You drew your sword upon me without cause, but I bespeak you fair and hurt you not. If a bloody coxcomb <laughs> be a hurt, you have hurt me. I think you said nothing by a bloody coxcomb. Oh, here comes Sir Toby, halting. You shall hear more. But if he had not been in drink, he would have tickled you other gates than he did. How now, gentlemen? <laughs> How is it with you? <laughs> That's all one. Has hurt me, this and that. Sot? Did see Dick's urgent sot? Oh, he's drunk, Sir Toby, an hour agone. His eyes were set at eight in the morning. Uh, then he's a rogue and a passy measures pavan. I hate a drunken rogue. Away with him. Who had made this havoc with them? I'll help you, Sir Toby, because we'll be dressed together. Will you help? An ass head and a coxcomb and a knave, a thin-faced knave, a gull! Get him to bed and let his hurt be looked to. I'm sorry, madam. I have hurt your kinsman. But had it been the brother of my blood, I must have done no less with wit and safety. <laughs> you throw a strange regard upon me, and by that I do not see that I offended you. Pardon me, sweet one, even for the vows we made each other, but so late to go. One face, one voice, one habit, and two persons. <laughs> a, a natural perspective that is and is not. Antonio, oh my dear Antonio, how have the hours racked and tortured me since I lost thee? Sebastian, are you? <laughs> Fearst thou that, Antonio? How have you made division of yourself? Is <laughs> <laughs> not more twin than these two creatures. Which is Sebastian? Most wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> sister whom the blind waves and surges have devoured. Of charity, what kin are you to me? What countryman, what name, what parentage? Of Messaline. Sebastian was my father. Such a Sebastian was my brother too. So when he suited to his watery tomb. If spirits can assume both form and suit, you come to fright us. A spirit I am indeed, but and in that dimension grossly clad, which from the womb I did participate. Were you a woman, as the rest goes even, I should my tears that fall upon your cheek, and say, thrice welcome, drowned Viola. My father had a mole upon his brow. And so had mine. And died that day from Viola from her birth, and numbered thirteen years. Oh, that record is lively in my soul, that. He finished and indeed his mortal act the day that made my sister thirteen years. If nothing lets to make us happy both, but this, my masculine usurped attire, do not embrace me to each circumstance of place, time, fortune, do coherent jump. But I am Viola. <laughs> I'll bring you to a captain in this town where lie my maiden weeds, by whose gentle help I was preserved to serve this noble count. All the occurrence of my fortune since have between this lady and this lord. So comes it, lady, you have been mistook. <laughs> <laughs> but nature to her bias drew in that. You would have been contracted to a maid. <laughs> Nor are you therein by my life deceived. You are betrothed both to a maid and man. <laughs> be not amazed, right noble is his blood. If this be so, as yet the glass seems true, I shall have share in this most happy rack. Boy, thou hast said to me a thousand times, thou never shouldst love woman like to me. And all those sayings will I over swear, 
And all those swearings keep as true in soul as doth the orbed continent of fire that severs day from night. Give me thy hand, and let me see thee in thy woman's weeds. <laughs> the captain that did bring me first on shore hath my maid's garments. He, upon some action, is now endurance at my Volvio suit. A gentleman, a follower of my ladies. He shall enlarge him. Fetch my Volvio hither! And yet, alas, now I remember me, they say poor gentleman is much distract. A most extracting frenzy of mine own, clearly from my remembrance banished his. How does he, sirrah? Truly, madam, he holds beels above at a stave's end as well as any man in his case may do. Has he a written letter to you? I should have given to you today morning, but as madman's epistles are no gospel, so it skills not much when they are delivered. Open and read it. Look then to be well edified when the fool delivers the madman. <clears throat> By the Lord, madam! No, 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 I'm not mad. No, madam, I do but read madness. <laughs> and your ladyship should have it as it ought to be. You must allow Vox. <laughs> By the Lord! I read it in thy right wits. So I do, Madonna, but to read it in his right wits is to read thus. <laughs> Therefore, perpend, my princess, and give ear. By the Lord! Madam! Sir! shall know it. Though you have put me into darkness and given your drunken cousin rule over me, yet have I the benefit of my senses as well as your ladyship. I have your own letter which induced, you, induced me to the semblance I put on, with the which I doubt not but to do myself much right or you much shame. Think of me as you please. I leave my duty a little unthought of and speak out of my injury. The madly used Malvolio. Did he write this? Ay, madam, this savors not much of distraction. See him delivered, Fabian, bring him hither. My lord, so please you these things further thought on, to think me so well a sister as a wife. One day shall the alliance of it crown. So please you here, at my house, and at my proper cost. Madam, I am most apt to embrace your offer. Your master quits you, and for your service done him, so much against the metal of your sex, so far beneath your soft and tender reading. <laughs> and since you called me master for so long. <laughs> Here's my hand. You shall from this time be your master's mistress. A sister! You are she? <laughs> Is this the madman? Now, Madam, you have done me wrong, notorious wrong. Have I, Malvolio, no. Lady, you have. Pray you peruse that letter. You must not know that I it is your hand. Write from it if you can, in hand, phrase, or say it is not your seal, not your invention. You can say none of this. Well, write it then, and tell me, in the modesty of honor, why you have given me such clear lights of favor, made me come smiling to you, and cross gartered to you, and to put on yellow stockings, and to frown upon Sir Toby and the lighter people, and acting this in an obedient hope, why have you suffered me to be imprisoned, kept in a dark house, visited by the priest, and made the most notorious gag and gull that Aaron Benson played on? Tell me why! Alas, Malvolio, this is not my writing. Though I confess much like the character, but out of the question, tis Mariah's hand. And now I do bethink me, it was she that first told me that was mad. Then came she smiling and in such forms which here were presupposed upon thee in the letter. For thee, be content. This practice hath most shrewdly passed upon thee, but when we know the grounds and authors of it, thou shalt be both the judge and the plaintiff of thine own cause. Good madam, hear me speak. And let no quarrel nor no brawl to come taint the condition of this present hour, which I have wondered at. 
and hope it shall not. Most freely, I confess, myself and Toby set this device against Malvolio here, upon some stubborn and uncourteous parts we had conceived against him. Mariah writ the letter at Sir Toby's great importance, in recompense whereof he hath married her. How with the sportful malice it was followed may rather pluck on laughter than revenge, if that the injuries be justly weighed that have on both sides passed. Alas, poor fool, how have they baffled thee? Why, some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrown upon them. I was one, sir, in this interlude, one sir top ass, sir. But that's all one. By the Lord, fool, I am not mad! But, do you remember? Madam, why laugh you at such a barren rascal? And you smile not? He's gagged. And thus, the whirligig of time brings on his revenge. I'll be revenged on the whole pack of you! He hath been most notoriously abused. Pursue him and treat him to a peace. He hath not told us of the captain yet. When that is known in golden time convinced, a solemn combination shall be made of our dear souls. Meantime, sweet sister, we shall not part from hence. Cesario, come. For so you shall be when you are a man, <laughs> but when you are in other habits seen. Orsino's mistress and his fancy's queen. <laughs> <laughs>